ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us yet another opportunity to be gathered here uh, this morning. Today, what's today's date? No? No, Islamic Not September. 15th of what? Rabiun al-Awwal, 1445 after the historic hijrah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to Medina, which is equivalent to the 30th of September, the 2023, the Christian era. We are gathered this morning, alhamdulillah, under the auspices of Musaada Youth Foundation. Uh, We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless those that founded the organization and those that are running the organization. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them in their endeavors and to reward them and to accept this gesture from them as an act of ibadah. The topic we have for discussion this morning is the sweetness of Iman. Uh, what is Iman? And then, how does one attend the sweetness of Iman? Understanding what Iman is, understanding that Iman has sweetness, and then knowing how to attend the sweetness of Iman is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation for one purpose, as we all know. Allah says, I have not created the jinn and mankind. I've not created mankind and jinn except that they should worship me. So we know the purpose of creation, the ultimate purpose of creation is for us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In accordance with how we respond, first of all, for us to appreciate and to accept this purpose and to live by the standard of this purpose of creation is obligatory upon us. So the extent of our response to this call that Allah has created us to worship him, the hikmah, the wisdom behind our creation, if we live up to the expectation of the hikmah, the wisdom behind our creation, then we have what is called faith, iman. Because you now believe that yes, you have been created by a supreme being. And that supreme being has rights over you. And then you now believe that you are obliged to worship that supreme being. And first of all, you now have to believe by what the supreme being has informed of himself and how the supreme being wants us to worship him. So, Iman is faith, basically, to believe. To believe. People believe in so many things. And basically belief is some sets of creed that one holds in his heart, which is professed on the tongue and manifested by the actions of the limbs. Which means it starts from the heart, believing in something. And in most cases, 
belief comes with respect to things that you don't even see. But you believe, right? And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran, Allah says, Alif la mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Iman, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The first characteristics of these people. When Allah spoke about the Quran, that it has been revealed as a guide for the pious ones, what then is the description of these pious people? The first and foremost description of these pious people given by the lawgiver, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ These are people that believe in the unseen. Because the hallmark of our belief system rests on our belief in the unseen. Otherwise, people believe in the things that say, if it's raining, it's raining. You can feel it, you can see it. So there is nothing for you to debate about. The sun is up here. We, we can see. Nobody is debating that. Only a madman would say, there is no sun up here. We feel the air. These are the things that when you see them, there is no any speciality when you say you believe that the sun is up. There is nothing special about that because it's something mushahada. It's something that you see. But now we don't see the angels, but they are here. For you to believe, then you are in khalfihi. min amri Allah. For each person, there is an angel in succession, one in front, one behind. Yahfadunahu min amri Allah. Protecting him by the command of Allah. There is an angel in front of Muhammad al-Rashid. There is angel there is an angel behind him. Yahfadunahu min amri Allah. Do you see the angels? No. Belief. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ There is no word that you utter, but there is an angel present, ready to record. أَحَدُهُمَا أَنْ يَمِينِهِ وَالْآخَرْ أَنْ شِمَالِهِ One sitting by his right side and the other one sitting by his left side. Now the gist is, do you see the angels? No, you don't see these angels. Now, what is belief? You believe that they are there. That is belief. But if you say Muhammad al-Rashid is sitting by my side, I'd say, yeah, yeah, I, I believe in that. I see. There is nothing special about that because you can see him. You have not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you believe that Allah exists. And you will not be able to see Allah in this world, but the believers will see Allah in Yawm al qiyamah they will see the Allah. They will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the plains of Hashir, the plains of gathering, the plain of gathering. They will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. The believers will see Allah. But in this world, Lan Tarani. In this world, you will not be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mawjood. You believe in the existence of what? You believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the existential reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is belief. Alaysa kadhalik. And that is why when we talk about iman, we're talking about the things that you don't see. It is very daunting on the mind. The scientists will, will tell you that we only believe in the things that we feel, the things that we can see, the things that we can prove empirically, the things that we can also touch, the things that we can, you know, but the things that we cannot see, we, we have difficulty believing in those things. Hence, it breeds what? Atheism. So the major thing that differentiates a believer from a non-believer is his belief system, creed. You, you were equipped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the ability to believe in the unseen. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. Those that believe in the unseen. You have not seen paradise. You have not seen Jannah. You believe in Jannah. You believe in the descriptions given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the things in Jannah. You believe in what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about is Isra wal Mi'raj. Is Mi'raj is ascension to the heaven. You believe in the things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said with respect to the things he saw when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him up. 
You have not seen these things. Your belief. And that is why the belief system consists of six fundamental things. Arkanul Iman, Asitta, the six articles of faith. What are these things? Al Imanu Billah. Al Imanu Billah. You believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe in Allah. You believe that there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this entail? You have not seen Allah. You will not see Allah in this world. The believers will see Allah in Yom al -Qiyam. May Allah count us among those that will be privileged with seeing Him. Some faces that day will be bright, effulgence of brightness. It means you're going to see. Looking onwards. But you believe that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. That is why when you are challenged at the time of ease, at the time of difficulty, you call on Allah. You have not seen Allah, but you know that Allah exists. This is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Ghulam, Ihfadillah, Yahfadka. Ihfadillah, Tajiduhu Tujaak. Bimana Amamak. Guard Allah. Protect the orders of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. You will find Allah in front of you in times of difficulty. Ta'araf ila Allah fi rakhai, ya'arifka fi shidda. Know Allah, recognize Allah, O young lad. At the time of ease, when things are easy for you, when things are difficult, you call on Allah, Allah answers you. You have not seen Allah, but you believe that when you call on Allah, 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 Allah answers your call. Belief. And this belief contains four things. Your iman, billah, azza wa jal. You believe in the existential reality of Allah, that Allah exists. That is the foremost belief in your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your belief in Allah. The first belief is you believe in the existential reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah exists, mawjood. And then the second thing, which means your belief in the existential reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you different from the atheist that does not believe that Allah exists. And then the second pillar of your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your belief in the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rububiyya. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbu samawati wal ardi, wa ma baynahuma fa'abuduhu, wa stabir li'ibadatihi. Hal ta'alamu lahu samiyya. This entails the three other aspects of your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of Surah Maryam. Rabbu samawat wal ard tawheed rububiyya you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the lord that created everything al khaliq Allah is the creator of everything everything Allah is the creator of everything whatever you see in existence Allah is the one that created it the ashjar the trees the trees that you see the ahjar the stones that you see Bihar, the water body. Al insan, mankind, al jinn. The jinnat, the mankind, the animal kingdom, the things that you see, even those that you see not. The aquatic life, everything that you see in existence, the ones that you feel, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, the nitrogen. The hydrogen, all of these elements, whatever you see, the ozone layer, the sun, the stars, the Milky Ways, everything in existence has been created by one supreme being, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the creator of everything. And then under this rububiyya, that Allah is the creator, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fatabarakallahu ahsanul khalakin. Glory be to Allah, the best of the creators. Not that there are other creators, but whoever creates has not originated creation. He has only modified what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And that is why when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillahi fatiris samawati wal ard. 
Allah says, or praise be to Allah. Fatiris samawati wal ard. Ja'il al malaika. Allah is the originator of the heavens and the earth. So Ahsan al The one that creates, the one that manufactured this iPad, the one that manufactured the Mercedes, the other cars that you see, I'm not advertising for them. The one that does all of these things, the architect that designs, has not done anything novel. There is no novelty to what you do of creation. There is just what transformation because you have to use what Allah has created. You transform it to something. You, use, you do this from what? Plastic. Who gave you that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadid. Hadid. The iron that you use to make weapons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that. Whatever it is that you see around is just a modification. So you have to believe that Allah is the absolute creator of everything. Is the originator. Fatir is samawati wal ard. Alaysa kadhalik. And then the second aspect of Tawheed al-Rububiyyah is what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord. Malik or Malik. Sovereignty, ownership of the universe belongs to Allah. Sovereignty. Allah is the absolute king that rules over the universe. There is no any power above the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no any power equal to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no any power like the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no any authority that can veto the decision of Allah. This is the aspect of Tawheed al rububiya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ لُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُ وَعَثِيثًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ وَالنُّجُومَ مُسَخَّرَاتٍ بِأَمْرِ أَلَا لَوْ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرِ تبارك الله رب العالمين. This is your Lord. Verily your Lord Allah, الذي خلق السماوات والأرض, the one that created the heavens and the earth. Of course, Rabbu samawati wal ard wa ma baynahuma. And whatever is in between them, of angels, of mankind, of all the creations. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Laysa ka mithlihi shay'un wa was samiul basir. There is nothing comparable to Allah. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. Allah is Allah. Allahu Allah. Allahu Allah. Wadah. So Allah has the sovereignty. It is what Allah decides that happens on the universe. Nobody can veto the decision of Allah. When Allah decides that it's going to rain, it's, it rains. When Allah withholds rain, Allah withholds rain. When Allah decides to give, Allah gives. When Allah decides to withhold, Allah withholds. There is no any authority above the authority of Allah. No authority equal to the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You only have everything below Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, sovereignty belongs to Allah. We have to believe in this. We have to understand this. So that we know it is Allah that gives wealth a rizq. Allah is the one that provides sustenance. And that is why the third aspect of your tawheed, of, of your belief in tawheed or rububiyyah, is to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Is the one that controls the affairs of the universe. At tadbir. Allah controls absolutely the affairs of the universe. So when you know that it is Allah that controls the affairs of the universe, it is Allah that decides absolutely what happens in the universe. Then you ask Allah alone. That was why the Prophet ﷺ, in the hadith in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, and also in the Jami of Abu Isa at Tirmidhi, وَإِذَا سَعَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهُ The Prophet advised Abu Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, yani Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhumah. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the Prophet sallallahu advised him. وَإِذَا سَعَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ When you ask, ask Allah. Iman, Iman. Iman. Because it is Allah that controls the affairs of the universe. So why ask other than Allah? وَإِذَا سَعَلْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ When you seek for assistance, seek assistance from Allah. 
Because it is Allah. We say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ الْإِسْتِعَانَةُ So because it is Allah that controls the affairs of the universe. Is that clear? And that then the second category of Tawheed now, which is under your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Imanu billah, is your Tawheed in the Rububiyya of Allah, in the Uluhiyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divinity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the right to worship. The right to worship. Um, the right to worship belongs to Allah. Only Allah has that right to worship. Bima'ana, you cannot direct any act of ibadah to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your belief. You have not seen Allah. We're talking about belief. But your actions now are justifying what you claim to believe. And then your actions are part of your belief system. The actions of the, uh, of the heart, the actions of the body parts, and the statements, the speech of the tongue, all of these complement one another. Nay, they are part and parcel of your belief system, al-Iman. So you believe that Allah, only Allah has the right to worship. Is that clear? Only Allah has the right to worship. So you worship Allah alone. That is Tawheed al if you like, you call it Tawheed al Ibadah. Ubudiyya. Ibadah. Worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The purpose for which we all have been created. The message of all the messengers of Allah. The message of all the messengers, Allah said, verily, we have indeed sent a messenger to all nations. What was the message? Allah, worship Allah alone, and eschew, eschew and avoid anything that has been worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Tawheed of Uluhiyya. And then there are so many aspects of it. As Salah is part of it. As Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah defined. Ibadah. He said, Ismun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda. Min al-aqa'id. Wal a'amal al-zahira wal-baatina. Kassalah. Wassiyam. Wazzakah. Wahalum majaha. And also, he spoke about what? The other aspects. Kal-khawfi. Wal-raja'i. Wal-tawakkul. All of this. They are acts of the heart. And they are part of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, al-khawf, you only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At-takhshawnahu. 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 You fear them when Allah, in reality, Allah is the one that is most deserving to be feared. الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحْدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ حَسِيبًا الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحْدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَحْدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ They fear none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Khashia Fear that is latched with what? With veneration. You fear a lot of the love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khashya. The believers. As-Salah. You only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiya wa mati lillahi rabbil alameen. All of this. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then what? Your acts of ibadah. Nobody enriches Besides Allah. That was why we started with Tawheed al So there is no room for you to call on any marabout. What the Hausama will call Boka. Because he cannot do anything for you. But he snatches away your Iman. And then if you believe in what he said. And then you commit shit. You die and then you will forever and ever be in Jahannam. Because nobody does. The acts of Allah. Only Allah gives. Only Allah takes. وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
الدعاو هو العبادة دعاء supplication supplication is the essence of worship so you ask Allah today we live in societies where people call on others besides Allah they are about to fall down they call on certain wali they don't know whether he is truly a saint or not but they attributed wilaya to such a person that such a person is wali and then they are about to fall down they call on him they are in difficult situation they call on him miskin ibn miskin miskin ibn miskin da'af at-talib wal matlub the one that you are seeking for the one that is seeking and the one that is being sought for all of them are weak they can neither do anything for one another so if you believe that there is one booker that will always follow you around for protection, he cannot protect himself. Allah has given us angels to protect us. Even though we don't see them, we believe that they exist. Is that clear? Nobody gives. Nobody gives. Power and authority except Allah. You have politicians today that believe that it is so, 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 and so, soothsayer or soothsayer that will make him governor or president or chairman or whatever is there that he is vying for. And even people that are in the business world, they believe that they, it is someone that will make their business to flourish. All of these do not lie in the hands of anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that clear? So you believe us to be strong in this. You don't see Allah, but you believe in all of this. And then, last but not the least in this, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is your belief in the names and attributes of Allah. Allah's beautiful names, the most beautiful names, and perfect attributes, without blemishes. وَلِلَّهِ <laughs> To Allah belongs the most beautiful names. Call on Allah via the agency of these beautiful names of Allah. Allahumma innaka afoon. Tuhibbul afu. And as the Prophet taught us, this is how to use the names of Allah to ask Allah. Ya razaqu ruzukuni kama razaqta Uthman ibn Affan. Ya Shaykh. Want to be as rich as that, right? That is how you use the name of Allah, to ask Allah. You have to believe that Allah has beautiful names. Allah is Ar-Rahman. The mercy, the compassion of Allah is absolute. Alaysa kadhalik. Allah is Al-Ghafur. Allah forgives. The, 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 but it, it is possible for a human being to have the attribute of forgiveness. But does he forgive like Allah? He forgives you but he remembers. And he often reminds you of what you did before. Humans, they forgive. So the names of Allah, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَوَسَّمِيُ الْوَسِيرُ وَاضِحْ So you have to believe. Allah is as-sami' Allah hears. And then he has the attribute of as-sam'u. Of sam'u. أَلَيْسَ كَذَلِكَ If someone should whisper behind we that are seated in the front row will not hear what he's saying because our hearing has limit. So you cannot compare that when Allah says Allah hears. Allah knows what is in, kept in the breasts of men. Wadah. Allah sees everything. Allah sees everything. So you cannot hide from Allah. Allah sees everything. When we believe in all of this and we know all of this, they increase our iman, they increase our faith. Is that clear? And then briefly, quickly, because of time, you are about to go home. You have no barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. You have what? The belief, al imanu billahi wa malaikatihi. You also believe in the angels of Allah. We've briefly spoken about the angels of Allah. Believe. You have not seen the angels, but you believe that they exist. That Allah has created them from what? From light. 
And then they have wings. Allah created them with wings. Angels are all like us. We are created from what? Clay. Adam alayhi salam. The angels created from light. The jinns, jinnat created from fire. So Allah created the angels. We believe that Allah created the angels from light. And then they have wings. Uli, ajini, hatin, mathna, wa thulatha, wa ruba'a. Yazidu fil khalq ima yasha. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Mathna, the angels, some have two wings. Wa thulatha, some have three wings. Wa ruba'a, some have four wings. Yazidu fil khalq ima yasha. Allah increases in the creation as it deems fit. Because creation, ala law al khalq. Creation is ease. Allah creates. So, Yazidu fil khalq ima yasha. Allah increases in the creation as it deems fit. Hence, the Prophet sallallahu he saw Angel Jibril alayhi salam ala suratihi, the one that Allah, the way Allah created him, lahu sittu biha janah, he has 600 wings. Yazidu fil khalq ima yasha. He has 600 wings. One wing covers the entire horizon of the universe. You can see. It covers the, it forms a canopy, it covers the entire horizon. And that is the wing of one angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's angels, Hamalatul Arj, the hadith of Jabir bin Abdullah or Ibn Masood, in an authentic narration, Hamalatul Arj, the ones that are holding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the distance between the earlobe and the shoulder is a distance of a journey of 500 years. The angels, you, 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 you don't see them, but you believe that is what is called Iman. Alayhi And then there are angels with different responsibilities. You have angels that are moving around their sole responsibility. Their job description is to look for gatherings like this where Allah has been mentioned. And then they record and they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows more than they do. Allah knows. But Allah asks them. In what condition did you find my servants? And they tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah knows. You have angels that move around. Sayyahun. They are like spiritual tourists. Looking for where people are mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have angels that go to gatherings where Quran is being recited. Majtama qawmun. The hadith of Abu Huraira. Majtama qawmun. Fi baytim min buyuti Allah. No group of people will gather in a house from amongst the houses of Allah. Yatluna kitab Allah. Waytadarasunahu baynahum. Reciting the book of Allah and teaching each other the book of Allah. Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina. Except that Allah will make tranquility to descend upon them. There will be calmness. And that is why when Quran has been taught, when people are teaching, you see everyone will be silent. Pin drop silence. The Rahmah, the mercy of Allah envelops them. The angels encycle them. Allah mentioned them in the garden of those that are with him. The angels that are yani, al -muqarrabun. So angels have responsibilities. You have those that I mentioned earlier. Those that protect and those that record our deeds. And then you have angels that are charged with the responsibility of taking the soul. Malakul Maut is charged with the responsibility of taking the soul. Israfil is charged with the responsibility of blowing the trumpet. So we believe. And then, wa malaikati wa kutubihi, the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The books revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has revealed books. Some Allah mentioned to us at Zabur of David and the Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, a Torah of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, a Suhf, the scripture of Prophet Musa also, a Torah of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, a Suhf of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, the Suhf, the scripture of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Injil of Isa alayhi salam, the Quran of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. We have to believe, Jumlatan, we believe in all of the books Revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then specifically, we are bound to be obedient to the provisions of the Quran alone. 
We believe Jumla and all of the books. But the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has charged us, we, the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to hold on to the belief in and to work with is the glorious Quran. So this is part of our belief system. We believe that it was brought down from heaven. This is belief. Alayhi sallallahu This is belief. None of us saw Angel Jibril alayhi salam bringing down Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam. And that was why the, the kuffar, they, they, they belied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam. And they challenged the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam. We say, they say we are not going to believe. Until we, saw, we see the angel coming down with book, revelation. Brought down to you. Aw tuskit as sama kama zaamta alayna kisafan. Aw ta'tiya billahi wa malaikati. Oh, you what, let Allah and his angels we want to see them in soft, in raw, then we believe. We want to see Allah, we want to see the angels that you're talking about. That is it, because they can't see the angels, they say we don't believe. We do not see the angels, we believe in the existence of angels. That is belief. Iman. وكتبه, the books revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe that it is pure. The purest of, is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The purest of words is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah brought down as revelation via his angel Jibril alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The revelation of which began the night of Qadr. Inna anzalna fi laylatil Qadr. This is the Quran. We believe that it was brought down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by Angel Jibril. نزل به الروح الأمين على قلبك لتكون من المنذرين بلسان عربي مبين. We believe that Quran has been brought down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by Angel Jibril in the pure language of Arabic, plain, مبين, plain, plain, pure, plain Arabic language. Surah to Yusuf. Quran in Arabia, it's an Arabic Quran. We believe that these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're eternal. They are eternal. Wadah. Kutubihi. Warusulihi. We believe in all of the angels. All of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe in the books, necessitate believe in the angels, the prophets that were given the books. Your disbelief in any of the books revealed necessitates what? The disbelief in the prophet that was given the book. And if you believe in if you disbelieve in one prophet, you are disbelieved in all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah spoke about the people of Noah. Allah said the, the people of Nu believe in, in the prophet. It disbelieved in the prophet. But in reality, they only disbelieved in what? The people of Nu disbelieved in the messengers. But they actually disbelieved in the only prophet Nu. So their disbelieving in one messenger disqualifies their claim of believing in other messengers. And that is why the Muslims now believe is لا نفرق بين أحد Men of whom? We do not dis distinguish. We believe in all of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are sent. That Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were sent with one message. Their message is universal. And that is the message of Tawheed. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاقُ This is the message. We believe in all of this. And then believe in the day of judgment. The day of judgment is not yet upon us but it will come it's a matter of unseen but we believe in the day of judgment we believe in all of these things this is belief 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 you have not seen it but you believe that the day is coming you believe in all of the things that have been mentioned with respect to the day of judgment and when we equally believe in the predestination the good and the evil of it Allah has predestined everything in <inaudible> 
Allah says, verily, inna kulla shayin khalaqna ube qadar. Everything we have created with what? We have created with determined proportion. Everything has been preordained. Everything has been preordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that clear? And then, what else? That belief is very important for us as Muslims. To believe in Qadr is very important for us. Because it is the key to our happiness. Whatever happens to you, if you believe in predestination, what Allah has preordained, then you will embrace it with good faith. The key to our happiness is what? Our belief in Qadr. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَصَابُ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِرْ لِكَيْ لَا تَعْسَوْا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ Again, here we know Allah has preordained everything. Everything has been predestined. So don't be sad over the things that have passed you by. So it is antidepressant. Believe in destiny is antidepressant. You will not be depressed if you believe in Qadr. Because Allah said, Is that clear? So if this is understood with respect to Iman, then we will end the lecture on by discussing the halawa, the sweetness of Iman. Which means Iman has sweetness. You know, just like when you test your food and they say this food is sweet, right? Iman has sweetness. When you test a sweet food, you want to eat more of it, right? You want to, you, you, you're always thinking of it. So when you test the sweetness of Iman, for example, if I've not taken this drink before, and perhaps maybe my first time of testing it, I found it to be tasty, right? What happens the next time? I'll go for it. The next time again, I'll go for it, right? There is no way you go for Iman if you have not tested the sweetness of Iman. So the more you test the sweetness of Iman, the more you go for it. You want more of it. So when you test the sweetness of Iman, so the one that does not understand what Iman is will not appreciate why he should go for more. This guy is surprised. You are asking for more jollof rice. You are in Nigeria, right? You are asking for more. He has never eaten jollof rice before. And the guy is surprised. Why is this guy particular about jollof rice? And he says, you just have to test it before you can understand what I'm saying. Right? But for the one that has not tested it before, will not understand how sweet it tests on your test balls. Is that clear? So the one that does not have Iman will not understand how sweet Iman is. Hence, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa narration of Anas bin Malik in Sayyid Bukhari, thalathun. من كن فيه وجد حلاوة الإيمان. Hence, Iman has sweetness, halawa. The outside man goes is halawa, right? حلاوة الإيمان, the sweetness of Iman. Whoever possesses the the following three qualities, the Prophet said, and we believe in the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم تصدقه فيما أخبره من أخبار الغيوب الماضية والمستقبلية. We we believe in the truthfulness of whatever the Prophet Sallallahu has informed of, of the matters of the past and the matters of the future that have to do with the unseen matters and even the things that we see, we believe in all of this thing. The stories that the Prophet Sallallahu told us about the previous nations, we believe this is part of our belief system, that we believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we believe in what he informed of. So we believe that Iman has sweetness. Hence, the Prophet said, Thalathun man kunna fihi wajada halawata al-Iman. Three qualities, whoever has them, whoever possesses these three qualities, will have the sweetness, the delight, the sweetness of Iman. The first one, Ayyakuna Allahu wa Rasuluhu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahuma. The first qualities if you possess it 
the that yani the one to whom Allah and his messenger prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam becomes dearer than anything else that you love Allah and his messenger more than anything else how do you manifest your love for Allah and his messenger above the love of anything else it is by choosing to obey Allah beyond obeying anyone else beyond obeying yourself if that thing that your soul is calling you to is contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to do that is you loving Allah more than yourself loving Allah more than anyone else لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق. There is no way you will be obedient to the creation when it involves this obedience to the Creator. You are a creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, so you should not prefer pleasing your soul, your soul desire, above what Sharia has dictated. So your soul is asking you to commit sin. But Allah says no. So if you choose to commit sin, you have loved yourself beyond Allah. That is a weakness of Iman. And that is why whoever chooses a soul above Sharia becomes a weak Muslim. And sometimes it takes him outside the fold of Islam. Wadah. This is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then someone is coming up with bid'ah. And then you are choosing to follow the bid'ah as against what the sunnah is calling you onto, you have chosen to obey, to love that person beyond the Prophet and that is a weakness of Iman. You have not fulfilled your part. The month that they have chosen to become the month that they do their bid'atic act in, Rabi al awwal that they do Mawlud, the Prophet has not sanctioned it, none of the companions did it, none of the pious predecessors did it, but now if you have decided to continue to do it, against what the Prophet Sallallahu was upon, it means you have chosen to follow those people that initiated those things and even your desire above the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu which means you love them beyond the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is a weakness. It is not acceptable. That is loving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is loving Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Can't you see that people have not yet tested the sweetness of Iman? Because they always prefer their desires they prefer other things above quran and sunnah that is why they are denied the sweetness of iman it is automatic here when you obey quran you obey sunnah you follow allah you follow the sunnah automatically you become what automatically you become what you become happy you taste the sweetness of iman and that is why people do not understand what sweetness of iman is because we are always guilty of preferring other things beyond above Quran, above the Sunnah of the Prophet. May Allah protect us. The second thing that you must possess in order to test the sweetness, the delight of Iman, is what? That you that, that such a person should be someone who loves a person. And he loves him only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا لما طاع الدنيا Not because of the things of this dunya. Not because he's your minister now. Or he's your chairman. Or he's your minister. Or he's your commissioner. Or he's your president. Or he's your governor. So you have naturally fallen in love with him because he has power. He has money. Or he's famous. Or this and that. Because of what comes of it. Of benefit. Whether this benefit is uh, uh, something that is tangible of money. Or whether this benefit is benefit of association. You love this person. Not because of Allah. But because of the things of this dunya. You will not test the sweetness of Iman. The sweetness of Iman comes when you love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two people coming together, meeting for the sake of Allah, separating for the sake of Allah, they will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day that there will not be what? A shade, or that there will not be any shade apart from the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two people coming together loving one another. Is that clear? And then the third thing is what? And this is the third thing. 
who hates to revert to atheism, to disbelief, as he hates to be thrown into the fire. So whoever hates to commit shirk, after Allah, because most of the companions, all of them, we are, yani those that accepted Islam, not those that were born into Islam, they were not Muslims, they were idol worshippers. So now that they have seen what Iman is, the way they hate to go back towards Kufur, because Allah has guided them, just like the way you had to be thrown into hellfire. If you have that, which means you're going to guard strictly your Iman, it means you have what you will be favored with the test of the sweetness of Iman. Hence, this hadith is a very great hadith. It's a fundamental from amongst the fundamentals of Islam. Because the Prophet guided us to these three things that will favor us with the sweetness of Iman. فَالْإِيمَانُ لَوَّ حَلَاوَةٌ وَطَعَمٌ يُذَاقُ بِالْقُلُوبِ You test the sweetness of food on your tongue. You test the sweetness of Iman in your heart. You test the sweetness of food on your tongue. Wallahi, you test the sweetness of Iman in your heart. And that heart has to be clear of anything. It has to be pure of nifaq, hypocrisy. Amrad al It has to be clear, purified against hasad, against hikt, against rish, against nifaq. Pure heart. Qalb al Then that heart becomes a recipient of what? Pure iman. And it tests the sweetness of iman. You know, if you are sick, what happens? The sweetest of food will taste bitter on your tongue. You will feel bitterness on your tongue. And at that time of sickness, what happens? You can't differentiate between sugar and salt sometimes. You are just taking the food, but you cannot feel the sweetness. You cannot feel it. You cannot taste the sweetness because your taste buds are sick. The same way when your heart is sick, is diseased, Wallahi, you won't taste the sweetness of Iman. So you need to purify it. You need to purify, purify it. And how do you do that? Woman wajada halawat al Iman. Whoever finds the sweetness of Iman, is taladha ta'a. That person will be delighted when he obeys Allah. So he stands up, he prays, he won't feel burdened. He'll be happy praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not like most of us today. Once the cloud is formed, people will wait for the rain to fall. They join prayers. Because they feel coming out to perform Salat al Isha is a burden. So it means they are not really happy trekking down to the masjid to pray. If there are reasons, you join. But if the reasons have not yet completed, people rush into joining the prayers. As if, you know, we are, we are, we are one burden less. It speaks volume, volume of the state of our iman today. That we are eager because we feel we are relieved of a burden. Even if we are going to go out to do other things after the Salat al-Maghrib. We don't care. But the fact that we, we have combined Salat al-Maghrib and Isha, we are happy about that. Wait till when it's raining. Wadah. And then, when you test the sweetness of Iman, then you're going to choose the hereafter over this world. And then you'll be able to bear difficulties on the path of Allah. When people complain when they are worshipping Allah is because they have not tested the sweetness of Iman. Or the level of the sweetness of Iman, their heart has some, the test boards of their heart is faulty, so they are not really feeling the sweetness of Iman. 
Wallahi, the one that feels the absolute sweetness of Iman will bear all difficulties for the sake of Allah. And that is why the companions could go out to fight for the sake of Allah. They know that they could either be killed. Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they migrated and they fought with their wealth and their poor bodies for the sake of Allah. And those who supported them, they are one and they are, they are part of one another. But they were willing to go out to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that clear? So you'll be able to bear difficulty on the path of Allah. How do you do that? What are the means of attaining this? And that was why we started with what, what is this Iman? So if you want to test the sweetness of Iman, then... You need to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. It comes. It comes. ma'rifati asma'ihi wa sifatihi. To know Allah. You, the more your knowledge of who Allah is, the more your iman increases. And the more you taste the sweetness of iman. And you will not know Allah without knowing the names and attributes of Allah. So you know Allah through his Beautiful names and perfect attributes. What tafkir fi masnu'atihi. And then you reflect over the creations of Allah. Alaysa kathalik. Inna fi khalki samawati wal ard. Wa akhtilafi al-layli wal nahar. La ayat li uli al-albab. You reflect over the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you look at the creations, makhluqat of Allah, look at yourself. Look at how Allah created you in perfect symmetry. When you divide yourself into two, there is what is on this side, on this other side. Perfect symmetry Allah created. Your nostrils are two, one, the other one. You divide yourself, the lips are divided, are divided here. Perfect symmetry Allah created. فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَلِقِينَ Is that clear? And then وَمَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْحِكَمُ وَالْعَجَائِبُ When you reflect over the creations of Allah what is contained of wisdom, the divine wisdom and عَجَائِبُ the amazing things that you see look at the moon, look at the sun look at the size of the earth compared to the size of the moon Compared to the size of the, of the sun. Look at the distance between the sun and the heart. And we are still feeling the scorching heat of the sun. Look at the Milky Way. Look at all of these things. What is content? Look at what fi anfusikum. Afala tubsirun. Wa fil ard. Ayatun lil mu'kinin. On the face of that, there are verses, there are signs for those that have certainty. So it increases our faith. When you look, you do what? Wa tafakkaruna. And then you reflect over the revealed verses of the, of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran. Quran. Afala yitadabbaruna al-Quran. Afala yitadabbaruna al-Quran. Walau kana min indi ghayri Allah, la wajadu fi ikhtilafan kathira. Do they not reflect over the Quran? Do they not ponder over the verses of the Quran? Do they not ponder over the words of Allah? Walau kana min indi ghayri Allah, if this Quran had been from other than Allah, they would have found in it so many far-fetchedness, so many discrepancies, so many contradictions. But it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no confusion in the Quran because Allah is a perfect law. There is no confusion in the things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do they not reflect over the Quran or they are their locks over their hearts? Quran. Reflect when you reflect the verses of the Quran. Why is there this? Why is that there? When you do a rubbed bain al ayat, and then you know the wisdom, 
and then you know Allah more and you know that this Quran wallahi is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala law anzalna law anzalna hadha al-Qur'ana ala jabalin la ra'aytahu khashi'an mutashaddi'an min khashiyatillah if we had revealed this Quran upon the mountain you would have seen the mountain shredded and been rent asunder من خشية الله out of the fear of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Allah says وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. These are similitudes. These are examples that we prefer for humanity. لعلهم يتفكرون. Perhaps they might reflect. They might think. They might ponder. Quran through this we know Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ليس كذلك. And then when we know Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we appreciate the ability that Allah can create whatever he wills and then we see the magnificence and the harmonious nature of the universe we know Allah we worship Allah we fear Allah the more then this will only increase us in love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then when we love when we love Allah then we are going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then we will avoid amma naha anhu, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then the second thing we talk about, loving your brother for the sake of Allah, not for anything of this dunya. La li mata'ad dunya, fi sabilillah, you love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this love can be increased as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we love each other? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will not enter Jannah until you love one another. Shan't I guide you to that which if you do, there will be love amongst you. Afshu salam bainukum. Say salamu alaykum. May the peace and blessings be upon you. Peace be unto you. Which means I'm not wishing you any evil from my heart. My tongue is not going to harm you. My heart is clear. My everything. That is when you say assalamu alaykum. Then you are actually giving the person the guarantee of safety from you. When you say assalamu alaykum, you are giving the, you have given him the guarantee of safety from you. That you are not going to harm you. Harm him with your tongue. You are not going to harm him. Even with your evil thoughts, and then you are not going to harm him physically. That is assalamu alaikum. And that is why when you do that, having understood fully the implication of what you say of salamu alaikum, then then you will love one another. Is that clear? And that is the teaching of Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, and, and then when you love your brothers, you are only there to bring that which is going to benefit them. And then you ward off evil from them. You are not going to harm them. No, when you see evil coming their way, you ward off the evil, not you taking evil to them. This is Islam. And these are the things that we must do in order to test the sweetness of Iman. And that is why the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, Al Muslimu Akhul Muslimi. A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. The brotherhood. The Islamic Brotherhood transcends beyond boundaries and, log and, and geographical location. It transcends beyond race. It transcends beyond tribalism. It transcends beyond social strata. It is universal. The Islamic Brotherhood, Al Muslimu, Akhul Muslimi. A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. La Yavulimuhu. It does not oppress him. You don't oppress your fellow Muslim. But you save him from oppressors. La yadhulimuhu. Wa man kana fi hajati akhihi. Look at the subtle encouragement. Or perhaps a clear encouragement. For us to support one another. Just for us to have the sweetness of iman. Wa man kana fi hajati akhihi. Whoever is in need of. And taking care of the need of his brothers. What are you doing? Oh. My brother wants to travel tomorrow, so I'm trying to sort out his travel documents. So I'm doing it for Sabilillah. Oh, my brother is about to get married. I'm trying to sort out the arrangement for him. Oh, my brother is, is about to do this. I'm trying to help him achieve that. Oh, he's about to write exams tomorrow. I know the subject. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach him to understand the subject. Oh, he wants to secure a job. I'm trying to intercede on his behalf to get the job. This, this, look at what the Prophet ﷺ said. Whoever, whoever is in what? Whoever is in 
taking is is yani looking after his brother what happens the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana allah fi hajati wallahi allah will take care of his niche wa man farraja an muslimin kuruba a difficulty a worry you take you lift it up from a believer allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet farraja allah an kurbata min kurubati yawm al qiyama wa man satara musliman whoever hides the secret of a believer allah will hide his secret also on yawm al qiyama and then no And then another way of attending this witness, I have to go now because it's said the less random. Another way to attend the sweetness of Iman is man ahabba ayyajida ta'ma al-Iman falyuhibba al-mar'a la yuhibbuhu illa lillahi azza wa jadda hadith of Abu Huraira and the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. Ahmad Shakir said, yani it's not the Isnad of the hadith is sahih. Whoever would love to taste the flavor of faith, let him love a person only for the sake of Allah Almighty. Is that clear? No. And then another thing for us. The hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. The, uh, 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 the hadith of Al Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, the father of Ab Ibn Abbas. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The qata'am al-Iman man radiya billahi rabban wa bil islami deena wa bi muhammadin rasoola. He has tested the sweetness of faith. He has tested the sweetness of Iman. He who is content with Allah as a Lord. He believes all of those things that we mentioned about the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe that Allah is the Lord giver. You are contented with the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and what Allah has prohibited. You are pleased with the decisions of Allah in your life. You are pleased with the decisions of Allah in the world that you live in. Everything you are comfortable, you are pleased with Allah as your Lord. You are not thinking of others besides Allah. You are directing your acts of worship to Allah alone. وَبِلْ إِسْلَامِ دِينَ And then you are pleased with religion of Islam as your religion. You are not seeking for any other religion. You are not pleased with any way to worship Allah other than the ways of Islam. وَمَا يَبْتَجِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever seeks for a way to worship Allah other than the way of Islam, it will not be accepted from him. So you are pleased that, yes, Islam is the way of life. And I've chosen Islam as my way of life. And I'm going to live accordingly. I'm happy with all the decisions and all the injunctions of the Sharia. Will be Muhammad and Rasulah. And then you are pleased with Prophet Muhammad as the messenger of Allah. Then such a person has tested. The Prophet said, such a person has tested the what? The sweetness of Iman. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shalallahu ilayla. Antistafurka wa tuwilayka.